What's up guys, Chase here, the Retro Gaming Guy, and today in this video we're going to unbox, demo, and review the Kitty RGB10 Max 3 plug and play handheld video game console. Now, back a couple years ago, I reviewed the original model, and then a couple years after that, I reviewed the RGB10 Max 2, so it's only fitting that I dive into the third version here. Always been a big fan of Kitty and their previous models, so we're going to unbox this today. We'll look at the layout and design. We'll fire it up, we'll tour through exactly what comes on here, stock, plug and play, and then we'll dive into some games to test out the performance. Let's dive into it. All right, guys, here we have our Kitty RGB 10 Max 3 handheld game console. Let's go ahead and start opening this up. So it's very nicely packaged as handhelds tend to be with Kitty. We'll go ahead and set the actual handheld aside. I wanna open this up. Inside here, we have our user manual located right here. If we go ahead and open this up, you can see the layout. It's a very basic user manual. Walks through all the functions and ports on the handheld itself. Charging instructions, as well as some information on the provided micro SD card as well. We also have a USB-A to Type-C cable right here. This is what you're going to use to actually charge your device. So go ahead and get that out of the way. Let's bring in, obviously, our handheld now. All right, so you can see the layout of this handheld here. First off, love the color of this. Reminds me of the um, yellow N64. It looks like the exact same color. Got that uh, Pokemon Pikachu sort of vibe to it. Love the four button configuration over here and the labeling, labeling on here as well, A, B, X, and Y. We've got our start button up here, select button over here, D-pad, which does feel very comfortable. We also have dual analog sticks on here with the button function on here. So you have up here at the top now your R1, R2, L1, and L2 shoulder and trigger buttons. They seem to be sculpted nicely. In fact, let me go ahead and just kind of rest that in my hands here. Feels very comfortable there. As far as the uh, functionality to the shoulder and trigger buttons here, definitely doesn't feel that responsive on the shoulders here. Uh, I find that the best action is down here on the outer edge, but it's, it's really not great to be perfectly honest. Um, you can see I'm kind of struggling to engage those. In terms of the trigger functionality though, on the L2 and R2 buttons, uh, it's a little bit better, not a great range of motion though. I can tell as I hit up here that it's just, you can see it, it barely moves to engage. I mean, it seems to function okay, but it's, it's not a great feel to be perfectly honest. Now up here at the top, we have our power button followed by our reset button. We have plus and minus over here so we can adjust our volume externally. And then we have a mini HDMI port up here. So we can take a mini to regular HDMI cable, connect this from the handheld over to a TV or monitor and we'd be able to play on here on screen. So it basically would turn this into the controller and we would just be playing on our screen, whether it's a monitor or TV, it would work all the same. So definitely like that. Now down here at the bottom, we have our speakers on the outer edges. As we move in, we have our USB-C um, port right here, another one over here, so we would use one for charging. We also have right here in the center, we have our audio connection. Right here we have our micro SD card slot. We can go ahead and disengage this. Now this particular one has a 128 gigabyte micro SD card in here. So it depends where you source this device in terms of you know what capacity card you're getting and what you find on it, so not every you know, retailer is going to provide the exact same experience on this handheld. So we're going to be checking out what this has to offer. Let's fire it up and test it out. All right, guys. So here we are booted up into our RGB 10 Max 3 from Kitty, And with this particular setup, we have a ton of collections in here. We're going to comb through each of these collections. Now, there is no game count for each one. So I'm not sure how many games are in each collection or total on this setup, but We've got MSX here. If we jump into MSX, we've got a lot of games in here. It takes me forever to scroll through this, which is a good thing. It means it's loaded with tons of titles. It's laid out very nicely as well. We have a, uh, in some cases, box art. Now, not every single title is scraped, but the majority are. We have a screenshot, logo, and box art on screen. So we'll back out of MSX. We have MSX2. We have PC Engine. We have PC Engine CD-ROM, we have Super Graphics, Turbo Graphics 16, Game & Watch, Family Computer, Nintendo Entertainment System, NES, Hacks & Homebrew, we have Family Computer Disk System, Game Boy, Game Boy Hacks & Homebrew, Super Famicom, Super Nintendo, Super Nintendo Hacks & Homebrew, 
we've got Virtual Boy, we've got N64, and we actually have this broken up into hacks, Japanese releases, translations, and then all of our games on here. And you can see again how long it takes to comb through here. So there's a ton of stuff on here. And we got to see, do we have some WCW games? Because that's my all time favorite, you know, titles to jump into for N64. Not sure how they perform on here, of course. So we're going to have to jump into that, test it out. And we will do that once we comb through each of these collections. But let's see if there's some WCW games on here. I saw them. There we go. We've got them all. So that's awesome. We've got Mayhem. We've got Backstage Assault. Awful game, but Mayhem I love. Nitro, decent enough, I suppose. This is the best one, though. WCW NWO Revenge, and we also have WCW versus NWO World Tour. And what do you know? we got Buff Bagwell right there in the image, so I'm loving it. Let's back out of this one. We've got Game Boy Color. we got Game Boy Color Hacks and Homebrew. We've got Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Advance Hacks and Homebrew. Pokemon Mini. We've got Nintendo DS, lots of great stuff in here. This is an instant favorite of mine. Same over here. We've got a bunch of Sega collections, Master Systems in here, Mega Drive, Genesis, Genesis Hacks and Homebrew, Game Gear, Game Gear Hacks and Homebrew, Mega Drive, Sega CD, Sega Saturn, 32X, Dreamcast. Let's take a look at Dreamcast here. Not a super deep collection, but pretty, pretty solid, actually. And we've got, let's see, no Virtua Tennis, but we've got Sonic Adventure, I assume one and two. Um, we've got Soul Calibur here, Resident Evil, we've got Power Stone one and two. Lots of great stuff, Marvel vs. Capcom titles in here, Crazy Taxi one and two, Cosmic Smash, pretty cool stuff. All right, we'll keep it moving. Sega Naomi over here, and we've got some sub-collections, definitely some good stuff. Not a totally stacked collection, but... Gives us a sampling nonetheless, 68,000, Sinclair ZX81, uh, ZX Spectrum here, Vectrex, Neo Geo, Neo Geo CD, Neo Geo Pocket, Neo Geo Pocket Color, original PlayStation, PSP, how many PSP games do we have? We have PSP Minis, so eight PSP Minis games, and we've got a fair amount of straight up regular PSP titles here, so we'll test those, some of those out to see what the performance is like. We've got some Scum VM over here. We've got Open Bore. Love Open Bore. Let's see what we've got. So we've got one, two, three, four, five different games in here for Open Bore. We also have Supervision. We have our Media Player in here, Music Player in here. We've got Tools, so we can go in here and make adjustments uh, to our emulators, to all the stuff on this. We have our Favorites Collection, so you can add titles in here for easy access. We've got Amstrad CPC. We've got MAMES, we've got our classic arcade games in here, sub-collections as well, which is great for easy access. Two-on-two -two Open Ice Challenge, one of my all-time favorites. We've also got Final Burn Neo, Atari 2600, Atari 800, Atari 5200, Atari ST, Atari 7800, Atari Lynx, Wonderswan, Wonderswan Color. We've got Oozebox, which I'm not familiar with, ColecoVision, Commodore 64, Amiga, Amiga CD. Pico 8, we've got Odyssey 2, and Television, and we're back to where we started with MSX. So, unfortunately, I don't know the game counts for each of these, but they are pretty deep, and, um, you know, we get a lot of access to a lot of games on here. So, I'm going to dive into a bunch of different games to test out the performance of the Pow Kitty RGB 10 Max 3, and uh, we'll see what the performance is like. Thank <laughs> you. 
Right, guys huge fan of the layout and design of this i love the fact that we have upgraded to a five inch ips screen really beautiful display here and it looks great for retro games now is it the highest resolution out there imaginable absolutely not but you got to remember these are retro games these are much older games we don't have anything current on here so the resolution on here and the size of this looks phenomenal for what we'll be diving into now this handles everything that I threw at it. So everything that's included on here performs extremely well. Dreamcast, PlayStation, PSP. I think you're going to be somewhat limited with PSP, to be perfectly honest. But with the games that were included on this model today, I had no issues whatsoever. Now, N64, very good experience there as well. We jumped into some WCW, NWO Revenge. We jumped into some Mario Kart 64. And I didn't have any lags or delays. Nothing was wonky about that at all. Now, I will say this, the audio on here, it, it starts to distort a little bit if you have it on max volume. That's what I jumped into today for the majority of these demos. It's not, you know, perfect. It's not terrible, but, you know, it does leave a little bit more to be desired. Now, in terms of the shoulder buttons, I mentioned that as I was going through the layout of this actual handheld before diving into games. And I did find that it was a little bit off with just the feel of it. It just wasn't a great shoulder uh, feel you had to kind of put your fingers out to the outer edge in order to get the desired action where it felt comfortable to play uh, So that was kind of you know a, a downside to this handheld the triggers also just really low action on the triggers I'm used to those hinged sort of uh, triggers that we're seeing more and more on handhelds these days and this just had very limited action so it wasn't great but it you know was very much playable at the end of the day buttons on here very responsive the analog sticks are pretty much exactly what you would experience on a pow kitty or amber neck handheld these days in fact i think it's the exact same analog sticks here used on all handhelds within this sort of price range now at the time of this recording the rgb 10 max 3 is priced anywhere from 60 dollars all the way up to about 115 120 bucks just depends where you're sourcing it from if you're going the aliexpress route you're going to pay a much lower price but you're going to get it you know, in a couple of weeks versus just a couple of days. Now, at the time of this recording, the RGB 10 Max 3 is priced anywhere from 60 bucks to $115, $120. That's a wide price range there, but it depends how you're sourcing this. If you're going the AliExpress route, you're going to pay a much lower price point, but it's going to take longer for it to get to you. If you're going the Amazon route, you're going to get it in probably one to three days, but you're going to pay a premium for the convenience of having it arrive faster. So just depends which route you want to take here. Do you want to save money or do you want to have it quicker? The games included on here are outstanding. Everything that was included on this model for me today performed very well. Um, I think that if you got this anywhere from 
honestly, if you got it for like 90 bucks and under, you are ahead of the game here. You're going to have a great experience and it's totally worth it. 120 bucks, I think is a little bit much for what you get here. I love the five inch IPS screen, but I'm not crazy about all the controls, mainly again, the shoulder and trigger buttons. They're just not ideal in my opinion. Everything else though, great. It's great to play Sonic on here, Super Mario Brothers, Mario Kart 64, WCW NWO Revenge, all that good stuff is a great experience here. So just got to weigh out the pros and cons, but let me know in the comments of this video what you thought of the PAL Kitty RGB 10 Max 3 handheld video game console. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content today, please give me a thumbs up on the video. And of course, hit subscribe to stay in the loop for all future videos. I'll provide you guys with a direct link at the top of your screen, as well as in the description of this video to the PAL Kitty RGB 10 Max 3. I'll provide you to links on both Amazon as well as AliExpress so you can go whichever route best suits your needs. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you on the next video.